Okay, ladies and gentlemen, so what we want to do now is take that concept that we had and apply it to some other functions. And if we can, I'd like to apply it to sort of a general uh, notation, if we could. So let's take a look at um, y equals x squared one more time. So y equals x squared. We know that for a vertical shift that's up or down, that was given by x squared plus or minus k. Now, we can change this function, and it would just be a different base function being moved up or down. So it would actually be the same for the square root function. You take the square root function, and you'd add or subtract a, a value, a numerical value, and that would be your vertical shifting of that function up or down. Well, the same is true for the e to the x, or the 2 to the x function. You would plus or minus k to that, and it would move up or down vertically. Um, we also have the reciprocal function. So it would be plus or minus a value. So it would be moving up or down. Uh, I'm trying to think if there's any other square root, reciprocal, exponential. That's All of them will do the same. The same with the cubed root, the cubic up or down. So notice that all of these are different functions, okay? And it doesn't matter what function I have. So if I want to move any of these to the right, or sorry, to move any of these up five units, then this would be plus five, plus five, plus five, plus five. And it would be outside the function itself. Notice that that's your function, that's your function, that's your function, that's your function, that's your function. This is going to be adding or subtracting a number to it. So in general, if I wanted to talk about this in function notation, the new curve would be y equals whatever base function you start with plus or minus k. And this is any base function. So if I take any base function and if I have a number on the outside, plus or minus, then that'll be a vertical shift, up or down, depending on whether it's plus or minus k. Okay? Uh, what about a horizontal shift? So that's movement left or right. Well, if we remember from grade 10, that was going to be inside the function. So it was actually plus or minus h squared. So it was inside the function. I'll give you an example. Up here, if it was, let's say I was moving up 5, then this one was x squared plus 5. Now this one, if I'm moving to the left 5, it looked like this. It would be x plus 5 squared. That was movement to the left. See how it's inside the function, the squared function? See how this is outside the x squared function? So outside, is being added to the range value. Inside is being added to the domain value. And if I wanted it moved to the right 5, then it's inside the function and it was moved to the right 5. So that's the difference between being inside and outside the function. Um, so if it was the root x function, then it would be x plus or minus h underneath the radical sign because that's inside the function. If it was 2 to the x, then it would be 2 to the x plus or minus h, because that was inside that function with the, eight, with the x. If it was 1 over x, then it would be 1 over x plus or minus h, all underneath. And I like to put brackets around it so that you can see it. If it was the cubic function, then it would be x plus or minus h cubed. Now notice all of these have the x value inside the function. The h value is inside the function. So if I wanted to talk about this in general, for any function, just like I did up here. Okay, let me back out a bit. So just like I did up here, so it was f of x plus or minus k. Down here, my new function would be f plus, oh, sorry, x plus or minus h. So it would be inside the function. Okay, so if I want an example, well, I've done an example here. So let's say I want to take the root function, and I want to move it to the right 5. So I want to take this function, 
square root x, and I want to move it to the right 5. I want to move it over here so it's 5 units. So instead of starting at 0, 0, it's going to start at 5, 0, and it's going to have the exact same shape. It's just shifted that way. Well, that new function's equation would be just like that. Notice it's inside the function, so it's horizontal. Okay? And that's negative, which means it's the opposite movement. It's going to be moved to the right. Notice if I'm outside the function, it's going to be vertical. Okay, um, that's vertical, horizontal shifts, and vertical shifts. Let's talk about um, stretches. Stretches and compressions. And these ones are going to be vertical, which means I'm going to take a curve, something like y equals x squared, and I'm going to want to take it, and I'm going to want to take it, and I'm going to want to vertically stretch it so that all the y values are some multiple greater than the, what they were before. Okay? So... Let me zoom in a little bit. Can't really see what I'm doing there. So this curve is going to be this one stretched up. And maybe an example of that would be y equals 2x squared. So for the original, I would have 0, 0. I would have 1, 1. I would have 2, 4. These would all be points. But for my new function, this would be x squared. For my new one, 2x squared, then it would be 0, 2 times 0. Then it would be 1, 2 times 1. And then it would be 2, 2 times 4. So what happened is, if you take a look at this, since it's outside the function, we could think of it like this. It's outside the function. We're taking all the range values and we're multiplying them by 2. Okay? So in grade 10, we did that with y equals ax squared. We put a number outside here. And if the number was a greater than 1, if a was greater than 1, then it was a um, vertical stretch. And if a was a fraction, if it turned out to be a fraction, then it was a vertical compression. So here's an example of a vertical stretch y equals ax squared for the um, for the quadratic and if it was the root function it would be ax a root x if it was the reciprocal function it would be a times 1 over x which top times top bottom times bottom would simply be a over x and if it was the um, exponential function, there would be an a in front of here. So it would be a, oops, didn't write that so nice, a in front of the 2x. And all of them would look like a f of x in general. So if I wanted to do a, let's say, a vertical stretch of root x, a vertical stretch of root x, say by 3, would be that. I did it want if I wanted to do a vertical compression of root x by a half. Well, there you go. Okay, it gets more interesting with the um, with the reciprocals with the math. So, for example, if I want to do a vertical stretch with the reciprocal, that would be a vertical stretch of three with the reciprocal, which we would simply write as that. And if I wanted to do a vertical compression of the reciprocal, it would look like that, and we would write it like that. So it gets a little bit interesting, but as long as we can pull these values out, as long as you can see that these are equivalent, you're going to be okay. As soon as you pull them out, you can see what's happening to them. So those are vertical stretches and compressions. Um, we're then going to have some horizontal um, stretches and compressions, and interestingly enough, that's going to happen when we work inside the function. So you're going to have a horizontal stretch and compression. And that will look like this. So 
Um, you haven't seen these before, but that'll be when it is f is a number inside the function. Usually we use c, I think. Um, and what happens is that if I wanted to do a um, y equals x squared, if I wanted to do a horizontal compression of that, a horizontal compression would look like this. Maybe a horizontal compression of 3. It would look like that. Now the reason why you didn't do this in grade 10 is because notice if we use our exponent laws, it can also look like a vertical stretch. So this is a vertical stretch of 9. This is a horizontal compression of 3. And they give you the exact same graph. That's why we didn't do them in grade 10. Um, to give you an idea of what that looks like. If I have a parabola that looks like this, and I do a horizontal compression, that means that this is coming in. Okay, so these, these uh, x values are going to be a third of what they were out here, but all the range values stay the same. And so you're going to see that this is a horizontal compression although it looks like a very extreme vertical stretch, and they, it is one and the same. So if I bring these in this way, okay, and if I bring these in this way, if I bring these in by a third, I'm actually going to get a vertical stretch that looks like 9. And that's just one of the things about the problem. It's just one of the ways that it works. What if I wanted to do a horizontal compression by 3 of the square root function. Well, it would look like that. Okay. Um, I guess you could argue that that is the same as a vertical stretch of root 3. But we normally don't do that. Um, what if it wanted to do a horizontal compression of the 1 over x? So it would be 1 over 3x like that. Um, what's the other one? What if we did y, a horizontal compression of the exponential with base 2? It would be 2 to the 3x. Okay, so it's being inside the function before we do it. Now those were all horizontal compressions noticed and they all had the values looking right like this. Now if it looks more like this Okay, if it's going to, oops, sorry, if it looks more like this, if it's going to be a fraction in here, um, if C is going to be, I don't really like talking about it this way, but it's actually C, but eh, let me just jump to an example because it's going to make life easier. If I have something like this, we're going to write it as, because it's top times top, bottom times bottom, so one third times x over 1 is going to be x over 3, okay? So that's what's happening there. Um, this, since it's 1 over, this is actually a horizontal stretch. It's the opposite of what you think when it's inside the function. So a horizontal stretch of, say, 3 for the parabola would be x over 3 squared. Okay, that's a horizontal stretch. And for the square root function, it would be x over 3 square rooted, or 1 third x square rooted. For the exponential base 2, x over 3, up and top. For the uh, reciprocal, it would look like that, or like that, and that would be a horizontal stretch. Okay, so I'm going to stop there, and then we will come back in just a moment.